mainly this paper, a little bit about this paper that I wrote with my two PhD students, June and Jan. They are soon graduating and I'm looking for new PhD students. Of course, they better be named Jin, John, or Jen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so during my PhD, I wrote three papers with David. It's uh, quite satisfying that our uh, three other collaborators, uh, Hiroshi, Alkadi, and Sunny, are also here at this meeting. And right after my PhD, uh, we published a fourth paper, uh, which was already mentioned by Zohar, uh, which discusses the circular Wilson loop in n equals four super young males. So at the beginning of the talk, I will review a little bit uh, this calculation and what is left what has been a what has been calculated from it in string theory, and then I will present a new work of another matrix model describing n equals four super young mills, uh, the Schur index of n equals four super young mills, and how we we can solve it exactly. So the circular Wilson loop is given by a Gaussian matrix model, and this was already <coughs> known previously by Erickson, Semenov, and Zarembo. And what we saw, what we did was solve it a uh, at finite n and at strong coupling beyond the large n and large lambda limit. And uh, this is the definition of the matrix model. This is the solution at finite n. This is a all lambda at leading order in n. This is the first one over n squared correction. And here is another expansion in a both in n and in lambda. This is the lambda series and here is the full one over n terms leading order in lambda. Uh, so this is the full term, a uh, large n, all order in lambda. This is leading order in lambda, all order in n, and this is then the first lambda correction to it, and so on. I'm not aware of any closed form expressions for the full or n lambda expansion. Um, so we phrased our paper as a prediction for string theory, so let's see what string theory told us. But what I learned in my PhD is like Larry said yesterday, calculate. If you have a model, actually calculate it. Um, and it's okay to rely on previous things that didn't calculate all the way to the end. And uh, somebody asked me to tell an anecdote from my PhD. Uh, so. There was a period during my PhD where I was a, trying to contact David. Of course, every time I came to his office, there was somebody important there, probably one of you guys. <laughs> and a, so it was hard to catch him. So I was sending emails. This was an efficient uh, method to communicate. But uh, then there was a period which he didn't reply to the emails. Of course, I went through this whole procedure of feeling rejected and thinking. <laughs> Should I send desperate emails every hour or, <laughs> or be quiet for a while? Finally, I, I, was suc uh, I succeeded in cornering him. And uh, after a, a long argument and check, uh, he convinced me that somehow his spam filter uh, flagged me. <laughs> <laughs> and he seemed genuinely surprised by it. So <laughs> something about the KITP uh, server worked for his benefit. Um, let's see what we learned uh, from that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so the um, so the large n result, a uh, large lambda result, uh, is reproduced by a classical string, which was actually checked already before us. And then some one over the all order in one over n leading order in lambda can actually be indirectly <coughs> reproduced by a Wilson loop at, in a high dimensional representation and captured by a D3 brain <coughs> a in ADS5 or by a D5 brain in ADS5 cross S5. Interesting embeddings, but there is no beyond the large leading order in lambda, there is very little known. Uh, I have a not completely rigorous argument for this all order in lambda at a at the planar limit, but the honest calculation of it, there was still a couple of papers in the last two months that cannot reproduce the first correction, this coefficient here. If you write it as an expo exponent, this is the leading term 
at large, la then the correction to the e to the square root of lambda term uh, still cannot be reproduced from an honest calculation. So still a lot is left for string theory uh, to reproduce. Of course, there is a lot of uh, generalization of this uh, by the, uh, the, the full proof by Pestun, and then all kinds of generalization, including what we heard in uh, Zohal's talk, uh, all kinds of calculations uh, using localization for dimensions, all kinds of exact results, and in principle, predictions for string theory. So let me turn now to the new research and uh, a new exact prediction for string theory. And this uh, is the Schur index of n equals 4 super young males, and I will define it briefly in a second. And uh, it is also a matrix model, and it can also be solved in closed form, and uh, my solution will exactly mirror what we did uh, for the circular Wilson loop. There are going to be expressions for finite n, there are going to be expression. There's going to be an ex expansion at large n. The result is even though the, it's somehow surprising, the, um, the matrix model looks much more uh, complicated, but the solution is extremely easy, is easier. I can write explicitly all terms in the expansion. Um, so what is the index? We want to calculate the superconformal index. We know what the Witten <coughs> index is. It counts the number of states in any quantum mechanical system with a plus and minus sign a uh, for depending on the fermion number and a uh, for a um, if we have some a uh, global charges we can refine it a uh, by adding by taking the charge q and having some fugacity little q um, that uh, that refines the index assuming a uh, some of the bps states uh, that contribute to the index have different values for this charge, cap capital Q. So in particular, capital Q has to commute with their supersymmetry generators. In the case of a four-dimensional field theories, what we do is just view the theory compactified on S3 as a quantum mechanical system, and then automatically we get a SO4 symmetry and R symmetries, and can use those as a global symmetries and um, in addition, uh, there may be extra flavor symmetries. So this is the definition of these guys from 10 years ago for what the superconformal index is, and then you can go on and calculate it. And um, there is a whole procedure that was done in these papers, and uh, you sum up the contributions for every multiplet. You look at all the fields, that contribute and their charges and so on, and the end result can be expressed in terms of functions known as elliptic gamma functions, which I will save you the definition of them because they won't be important for me. So this expression <coughs> is for n equal. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, now the. An extra ingredient is that gauge invariance, so this is done separately for every multiplet, but then we need to enforce gauge invariant, so uh, we need to integrate over, a, over some parameters, which are the holonomies, uh, so we end up with an integral over these elliptic gamma functions. So this gives us a matrix model, and um, being an index, an important fact is that it does not depend on the coupling, so we don't have here any dependence on the coupling, just on the fugacities. And if we have a class of theories uh, classified by n, by the rank n, then we have a dependence on n, as we will have soon. Uh, so the index is the same for S dual theories, and the nice thing about that, that this allowed to, uh, to understand the uh, the index for series that are not uh, that are not Lagrangian, and this is some of the things Leonardo and uh, Shlomo and their collaborators studied. But in this talk, and and they have many many results for those. In this talk, I'll be very old-fashioned, and I will concentrate on Lagrangian theories, and in particular on n equals four 
super young males. So, as I should have said before, but Leonardo already pointed out, uh, my focus is on n equal theories with at least n equal to supersymmetry. And then there is a particular limit which will be useful where we can unrefine the index. So we have more supercharges, so we count states that preserve more than uh, only one of the supercharges. We cho choose a, a pair of supercharges. This effectively equals to Q in this formula that I had before. Q. So T is set to Q, and then miraculously there is no dependence also on P, so we just get the fugacity Q. And the nice thing that happens there is that these elliptic functions, that uh, elliptic gamma functions that I didn't define for you, combine into Jacobi theta functions, and I'm not going to define them for you because you know what they are. So normally in the literature they are written in terms of a, a Q theta functions. Those are related to regular old-fashioned Jacobi theta functions in a very simple way. I just chose here to write it in terms of Jacobi theta functions, and I'm using the conventions of Mathematica, which are different from the conventions of a Polchinski or Mumford, uh, for those who care. Uh, so <laughs> the q Pockhammer symbols become eta functions, the theta functions become theta 2, theta 1. Uh, th here I have theta 4, theta 1. I have also other thetas appearing later. Whenever I d the theta, of course, has another argument, which will be q, which I suppress everywhere. Tau is essentially log q. And um, these, are, these are the contributions of the fundamental field, which will not play any role. Uh, I have a vector field, which has this integral over these parameters alpha. And for a bifundamental field charged under two gauge fields, alpha 1 and alpha 2, I get this kind of contribution, product over all, uh, all i and j, 1 over theta 4 or alpha i minus alpha j. So this allows me to write down uh, the, the matrix model for every Lagrangian theory. And by the clever tricks of Leonardo and his friends, you can deduce from this uh, expressions for the index for non-Lagrangian theories. So for the matrix model, I'm going to mainly concentrate on n equals 4 superior mills. But let me start now at the beginning with an arbitrary circular quiver. So we have L vector multiplets and L bifundamentals connecting them. And we have some results for flavor fugacities, but in this talk I will set them to zero, and there are no fundamental fields. And this is the matrix model. There is some pre-factor. And then we have L n-dimensional integrals over these eigenvalues alpha a, which are compact, going from zero to pi. And then in the numerator, we have some kind of uh, elliptic Vandermont for each of those uh, um, nodes, A. And in the denominator, we have a coupling of eigenvalues of the node A to the eigenvalues A plus 1. This expression has been known for many years. And uh, in the original paper, uh, not in the case of the Sure index, it was solved in the paper of Shiraz, it was uh, solved in the large end limit. But beyond that, I'm not aware of uh, any attempts to treat it as a regular matrix model and solve it using matrix model techniques. Of course, oh, everything that uh, people studied about the index and other expressions for it also apply for here. But uh, just treating it as a matrix model, I'm not aware that this was done. So I will show you in the next 15 minutes how this can be done and solved completely. Uh, which is rather miraculous. So I told you before what I learned during my PhD, and now I'm with my two new, two first PhD students. Um, so what did I uh, try to instill in them? First, uh, you need to calculate whenever it's possible. And uh, of course, rely on known results. So in the role of uh, uh, Erickson, Semenov, and Zarembo. We have Shiraz, <coughs> uh, Leonardo, and uh, Shlomo here. And uh, of course, there is the issue of the spam filter. <laughs> but <laughs> turns out that this property skips it one generation. And my student inherited from David a <laughs> spam filter. <laughs> 
and he does not reply to my emails. <laughs> There was one more. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is it's the university uh, server, so I cannot do anything about it. Uh, in Santa Barbara, it was the KITP server, so actually <laughs> David had people to set it up for him <laughs> and then fix it. Um, now, there was something else that I learned in Santa Barbara. Uh, I don't think that this was taught to me by... Uh, David, but uh, you know, it was a long time ago, it all got mixed up, and uh, this was uh, pottery. And because it all got mixed up in my head, all that I learned during my PhD, including pottery, uh, by now I decided to make a vase and put on it all the, for the entire derivation of the index. Um, <laughs> because it's a very compact expression, uh, you probably cannot see it here, but on maybe on the TV. It comes with citations, yes. Uh, please don't send me emails telling me to inscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring it, but uh, How big is it? 40 centimeters. Um, yeah, the problem is making the diameter right so all the citations fit. The other problem is that one of our references, I will, I will soon quote, is uh, of Frobenius, and he doesn't have an archive <laughs> number. I made an arbitrary shortening of the, <laughs> of the name of the journal and so, so on. Um, so, so, okay, so this is the... Um, another interlude uh, to give you another exact prediction and this is of a uh, ABGM theory for ABGM theory yes yes it's here <laughs> 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 no I, I <laughs> okay. I will but my inspiration comes from the solution of a the matrix model of uh, ABJM theory. And um, we can also do localization there, and you get this matrix model. And the important uh, trick to solve this matrix, there were many ways to solve this matrix model, a very complicated way, then just a traditional large N approach that I did, and then uh, Igor and collaborators solved it in another limit, which was easier. But uh, to get the full large N a perturbative result in large N, uh, almost immediately, what you do is apply this determinant identity of Cauchy, uh, where you change it, you plug in X as an exponent and Y as an exponent um, to get it to become a, a hyperbolic uh, determinant identity. This is the S3 partition function for ABJM, yes. Um, and you plug this in, and what you get is a model of one-dimensional free fermions. Uh, there are no interactions between them, but there's a very, very complicated Hamiltonian. And um, then if you just study the asymptotic density of states of this Hamiltonian, you can, this re reproduces the full one over n perturbative answer as this airy function. This airy function, of course, at large n, a, at large argument, will scale like n to the 3 halves, which is the famous a, behavior of a, M2 brains. And then there are known perturbative corrections, which actually by now are also known in closed form, but a, they are very complicated. And a, so all terms have a natural M-theory interpretation, but actually to get even these, all these numbers, b and so on, these factors, a, a, and certainly all the coefficients, numerical coefficients of the non-perturbative corrections, which are a, a string instantons or D-brain <coughs> instantons or a M, a M brain instantons wrapping different cycles, a, they are known, it's known what they are, but a full honest M-theory calculation to get them, I don't think exists. 
So let me go back now and uh, give Shiraz the answer. If you couldn't read it on the vase. And uh, the trick is, and this is also why I needed to con concentrate on the sure index and not on the general index, is that I need this determinant identity, which was here very simple. But uh, of course, Frobenius already knew it uh, uh, in the 1870s, I think. <coughs> and um, <coughs> there, if you take these, the exact ratio of theta functions that we have, it is given by a determinant of another ratio of theta functions, which I write as a CN function, a, as a Jacobi elliptic function. And a, as opposed to the previous case, which is so simple, here the determinant, there is an extra prefactor in front, which is a bit of a nuisance, because these parameters A are the center of masses. They are the sums of these alphas. Not that I'm aware of. I'd be very <laughs> happy to know. Um, and uh, Eric told me that this is also a formula he re-derived as the um, expression for a fimrionization on a torus. And in principle, there are higher genus generalizations of that. <laughs> but those will not be elliptic uh, gamma functions. Those will be higher theta functions. Um, so there's still an application for that uh, waiting. I don't know what that is. Um, so if we can eliminate the dependence on the center of masses, we will get again a free model, just the coupling of alpha and alpha. And it's even easier than before because now we just have this difference uh, terms. In the case of ABJM, in addition to these difference terms that you get from here, you have the Chern-Simons terms, which complicates things. But uh, in our case, the, it, we just have a potential, a Hamiltonian of different terms, of different form. And there are different ways uh, to eliminate these A's. I will align, explain. But let me explain again why this determinant identity is so important. When we start with a circular quiver, we have a van der Mond which couple all the eigenvalues of this node to each other, couples all the eigenvalues of these modes to these through these bifundamental contributions. All the ones from <laughs> here to themselves and so on. We have many, many interactions. In this model, we just have a coupling of the, uh, an eigenvalue from here to one eigenvalue from here once I fix the particular permutation in my determinant. So I have a sum over all permutations. But once I fix it, I take one eigenvalue here, propagate it to one eigenvalue here, propagate it to one eigenvalue here, just with this CN function. So you can think of this a, a chain of CNs as some a Hamiltonian, exponent of Hamiltonian taking me around and bringing me back either to the same eigenvalue or to a different eigenvalue, depending on which permutation I have. And therefore, I don't have any interactions, just a complicated Hamiltonian, or in this case, in ABJM, it's a complicated Hamiltonian. In this case, it's an almost trivial Hamiltonian. So there are three different ways to remove these A dependence. Either I take N equals four super young males, then A, A equals one, cycli is cyclically identified with little A equals two. This cancels, this cancels. If I take SUNs, the A's are zero, but then I need to put a delta function <coughs> in, my, uh, in my measure, which way I will expand in Fourier modes. And if we do UN, we can expand this function Fourier modes. And that's a bit nasty, and we didn't progress on that. But we do have a lot of results for a general circular quiver with SUN. <coughs> I see. No, no, no. So, uh, no, uh, th this is for n equals two, 2. So, okay, so maybe this doesn't mean anything. Sorry. I. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not really talking about the UN at all, so. Um, so, let me now, so this was for a general circular quiver. Uh, for n equals four super young males, we just have the single node. So I just have, after doing the determinant identity, I have this determinant, the sum over permutations, and then uh, the integral of the product of these CN functions. There is this annoying prefactor in front, which is sort of interesting. So here I rescaled from the index to some partition functions of free fermions. And these are free fermions living on a circle with this interaction, CN of alpha. The prefactor is independent of the alphas. The prefactor is independent of the alphas, but it depends on N. And this ends up being half the, pe half the quasi period of the theta function, which is why it's not easy to <coughs> remove it completely. Yes, the alphas appear only in this integral. So this is just a prefactor, which is uh, not really that crucial. Now to do these, in, in, so we have here a permutation which we can decompose into cycles of length L and then <coughs> for each cycle of length L we have L integrals, well actually right here, with these rows which are essentially this thing coupling to each other going from alpha 1, alpha 2 and then coupling alpha L to alpha 1 and this row is exactly this CN function which here I Fourier expanded and now, because this is of difference form, I can just do these integrals, and I'm just going to get Kronecker deltas. So I have L sums, uh, L sums here over LPs, but uh, then I have delta functions. So at the end result is that I have a single sum over this quantity to the Lth power of this Fourier coefficient to the Lth power. So this is these ZLs which appear in here depending, they are the, L will depend on uh, the permutation, it's the length of each cycle. And these sums actually have been computed before. There's an algorithm to calculate them and here I write the first four of them. And they are given in terms of uh, complete elliptic integrals, uh, K and E and K is the elliptic modulus, um, which of course depend on Q in a particular way. So now if we want to calculate the partition function, the function of N, we need to sum over all permutations or all conjugacy classes of permutations, and this is the correct combinatorics for that. And you get the result for uh, I1, I2, I3, I4. Here I reintroduced this annoying prefactor that was before compared to Z of N. So this is the answer at finite N up to N equals four, but Mathematica will quickly generate it for you to arbitrary A. finite N. It's always a polynomial in K and E and little k. So this plays the role of the Laguerre polynomials <coughs> which we had at finite N for the circular Wilson loop. Wouldn't it be easy to introduce the chemical potential for N and just Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you can introduce a chemical potential for N and uh, get a grant a partition function. And then, uh, as Nikita knows, this combinatorics goes away. And instead, you get uh, just this exponential factor, which looks very much like a logarithm, if only ZL was the power of L, which it is, except for this sum over p, which becomes a power of p, a, a product over p. So we have a product over p of this thing, which turns out to be an elliptic function, a very simple traditional elliptic function, uh, which you can write it in this way or you can write it in this way. Furthermore, you see here that we have these two terms and there was this extra factor appearing in front of the partition function relating i n and z n. There was this factor. And this is half of the quasi period. So actually, it alternates between, uh, this alternates between theta 3 and theta 2. 
with an extra prefactor of some power of Q. So if you split uh, this sum into the even and odd part, you will actually separate this piece and this piece. This part is even under kappa going to minus kappa. This part is odd under kappa going <coughs> to minus kappa. So the sum of these terms contributing to this is this. The sum of these terms gives this. So I can actually absorb this term in the definition and then take the sum over i with just this extra factor of q, again another factor, and split psi in this way that I said, it's these two terms, and then even this, this prefactor in front here cancels, and I just get a sum of two theta functions. So this is the generating function for all In this case, I don't have a flavor fugacity. Um, so there is a flavor fugacity. I do not know how to calculate in a closed form for the flavor fugacity. Uh, in general, for what I will do later for a, a circular quiver, we, uh, we have some results as long as the sum of all the flavor fugacities vanish. Uh, but for n equals 4, there's only one, so we need it to vanish. So we can define a new a quantity, which is very elegant, and that is this sum. So this is a, so we have two types of generating functions, either this or with this slight refinement of the positive and negative contribution, a even and odd contributions. We have this generating functions, and they are given by very explicit a theta functions. But now we want the f a result a, a large n expansion for this. And for this, we need to invert uh, this relation or this relation. And this is done by taking this integral. So this is a, the Fourier expansion of psi, which is the Fourier expansion of a theta function, but with a very complicated argument. Well, you can do it in several different ways. That Direct way, the simple way is actually doing the Q expansion here. But then you're not sure that it's going to convert, but it does. But you can also do the honest large mu expansion, which will correspond to the large n expansion by a saddle point. And then you write the R cos in a large mu in this way. Then what <coughs> you have is this log of this guy a shift of i mu. Of course, the integral of this are just going to be the Fourier modes of a theta functions, which are trivial, are very easy. But then you have this shift of these, which you write as a shift, which you get in terms of derivatives of theta functions. Derivative of theta functions are sort of nasty, but you can integrate by parts, move all the derivatives on this, and get powers of n. So what you get at the end is a, so you get these powers of n, and this is the a <coughs> this is the Fourier expansion of the theta function, which is very easy. So the final answer is just this exp expression, which is a Q expansion. You have your power of Q, a, but it's a uniform Q expansion for arbitrary capital N and appears here in these combinatorial factors. It appears here in this, uh, in this power of Q. So this, uh, such <coughs> a compact expression does not exist for the uh, uh, circular Wilson loop. Of course, we can take the large n limit, and then we just need the case of little n equals 0, where this term vanishes, and we just get 1 over theta 4. So this is the large n expansion. Uh, all the terms are non-perturbative. There are no 1 over n corrections. All are q to the n, and q is less than 1, so it's e to the minus n corrections. And uh, this series converges to uh, these expressions I had before uh, here, even for n equals 1 and 2 
this is gives the exact answer. So it's your choice whether you prefer these weird polynomials of uh, elliptic integrals or uh, this explicit uh, Q series. So this is the answer. Uh, so the leading large n result is just 1 over the theta 4. Yes. So what are the predictions uh, for string theory? It's this 1 over theta 4. Now, what do we know about the index in uh, string theory? We can count states in string theory, which again was done in the paper of uh, Shiraz and Maldacena, not for the sure index, but you can surely refine it. Um, and this matches, but this match is not very surprising since you know that the spectrum of string theory on ADS5 process 5 is the same as this, or at least, the, uh, uh, not of string theory, this, uh, of supergravity on ADS5 process 5 is the same as the spectrum of a uh, a BPS operators in a, N equals 4 super young mills. So the fact that a particular counting of them would work is pretty much guaranteed. You would <coughs> maybe want to reproduce it from a supergravity calculation, but a, from calculating an action, not a counting of states. But so far, a, it, I don't think it's known how to do it. <coughs> a, and then you want to calculate all these quantum corrections. Uh, which, as far as I know, have not been done, not as far as counting states and not as far as any supergravity uh, action kind of calculation. So this w should be some kind of objects wrapping the compact direction uh, in ADS, and you would have, you need to sum over an arbitrary number of them. So the capital N is, is very natural for the action of a giant graviton kind of object. Uh, the little n would correspond to having a little n d brains, and for some reason, these little n d brains should be accompanied by <coughs> uh, n squared degrees of freedom. So it's somehow like you need to take uh, n d brains and put all the open strings between them. Why? I don't know. So this is our prediction for string theory, which. Uh, I don't know uh, how to calculate. So let me briefly review what happens for a circular quiver. Um, so a lot of the things uh, go through. We need to do, we need to take care of this capital A factor, um, which uh, we do by um, going for a, by so we're in SUN, so there isn't this capital A, a factor, and we have a delta function on a, this n integrals. We need to reduce it to n minus 1 integral by introducing a delta function, which we do by Fourier expanding. Sorry, it took me too long to say it. So we have, for every node, we have a, a sum over n. One of them gets removed by integration, but at the end we get an a, L minus one dimensional sum in addition to the sum over P that we had before. And the expression ends up being very analogous to the one we had before. So again, what I, this, this expression is the same as this thing that I had here. We have, here we have this product like that. And for the L node <coughs> quiver, we're gonna have Again, a similar kind of product. This, the entire thing, this generating function, this grand canonical partition function, would need to be summed over these vectors. But for one choice of vectors, we have this thing. And we can write it, again, in terms of theta functions. But these arguments of the theta functions become these roots of a complicated polynomial, which depends on the vector n. And we cannot factorize an arbitrary polynomial turns out that the degree of the polynomial is 2L. So for L equals 1, it was quadratic. But for even L, the degree of the polynomial reduces to L. So we can actually do everything completely explicitly for L equals 2. We can also work and at the large n limit for an arbitrary L and, and get some answers. I will not explain it, but it, 
It's again the analog of 1 over theta 4. It's something like this. But for the L equal 2 case, I said we get another quadratic polynomial, which we can factor exactly. And the analog expression, the Q expansion, has now two integers. So we seem to have two different uh, types of, uh, of d-brains. And again, the factor and another combinatorical factor. And we also have the result. We can do the result for finite n for 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, we have a, a code that would generate it to any finite order. And of course, a the Q expansion of all of those matches this when you plug in the values of capital N. So let me conclude. Uh, we have the complete result for the Schur index of N equals 4 super young males. Uh, and we get an exact Q series. We get a generating function in a very compact form as a Jacobi theta function. And we have for fixed N these polynomials, ellip elliptic integrals, and all the same result for the two-node quiver, for the uh, arbitrary circular quiver, uh, we have the large n result. A, a lesson from this is that it's useful to do the uh, sum to sum over n to write the generating functions for these uh, quantities, and uh, which field theory people are not particularly happy with. Why am I summing over different field theories? But because it works. And the, actually in ADS you can, you can attribute a meaning to it because n is a, a parameter. You can, a, you can change variables to the conjugate of n. Yes. So many predictions which haven't been done in ADS. A, it would be interesting if we can generalize it to non-Lagrangian theories. We want to relate this to other expressions for the index. Uh, there is a very nice uh, expression that uh, Leonardo and collaborators wrote in terms of a sum over young diagrams of Schur polynomials, and we don't know how to relate. In simple cases, we re can relate it. We don't know how it is uh, related in general, and uh, many other extensions possible. So. Thank you and happy birthday. Double the number of the usual. So two, yes. Two, two super symmetries, two super symmetries. Exactly. And uh, do, do Leonardo collaborators have a prediction for the, the full, for the full super symmetric spectrum? Or? What do you mean? All, all operators that are annihilated by these. You can enumerate them. I mean, you can, you can write the letters and you can do the usual That's stuff. The but some of them are lifted by interaction. Oh, but the index is quite confused. I understand. But I was wondering whether there was a prediction for the, for the super symmetric spectrum in the